What did you not know or realize until after living with a woman? Story one. Lived with two girls as roommates in college, and I certainly learned some interesting things from them. Number one, they were very messy, but their mess was also contagious. My only real safe space was my room and a desk I had in the common area that I would play games on. Number two, they would constantly get free stuff all the time. They also paid for a lot of stuff, but I never realized just how much food and alcohol they would get from guys trying to date or hook up with them. The best part was they would bring home leftover food that had been barely touched and would never finish. I basically got a free meal whenever they went out. Number three, getting access to the laundry machines is a battle. That thing would run seemingly constantly. I had enough clothes that I could get away with running a load or two once every two weeks, but they always had that thing running and clothes all around it. Funny enough, I had to teach them what the lint catch was within the first month of living there after I found a brick-sized amount. Number four, guys really are sketchy as heck. When going out to a bar with one of my roommates, they would often pass me drinks they didn't want or were suspicious of that some random guy got for them. Not saying no to a free drink, I was happy to take it at first. I most certainly have had a drink spiked with something and have also had to play creeper defense after watching a guy get rejected, then proceed to try and follow them around the bar. I would often have to start chatting them up, wait about 10 to 15 minutes for the girls to leave and find a new place to hang out, then slip away while a guy went hunting trying to find the roommate. Terrifying that I even had to be in that role, let alone have it become a routine. Story two. Number one, they take over the bathroom. One day you'll walk in and realize 90% of the space is filled with her stuff. Number two, your shower drain is going to get clogged. You'll call a plumber and he'll pull out fistfuls of long hair. She will look at you seriously and say, that's not mine, even though you have a crew cut. Story three, the wardrobe in your bedroom that you agreed to share 50-50. Just like the bathroom, in a few years it will be 90-10. Number four, Things wrapped in little plastic bags will appear in the fridge. All stuff she is going to use one day. Some of it she does. Other stuff is there for years without being used. Number five, that electric kettle you bought when you first moved into the apartment. Because it's one of the first things you buy when you move into an apartment, she will use it every day. When the time comes to split up, she will be convinced not only that it is hers, but will remember buying it too. Number six, one day you will walk into the bathroom and get smacked in the face by wet bras and panties hanging up. Number seven, sleeping together is wonderful. When you break up, the hardest thing to get used to is sleeping alone again. It may take you months before you can sleep properly again. Number eight, one corner of the shower will become a graveyard for bottles of shampoo, conditioner, all sorts of stuff. Number nine, strange new foods will appear in the cupboard in the fridge. And this is actually good. You'll get to try new things. Number ten, some things you do, she is not going to like and will want you to change. You will feel the same about some things she does. Number 11, she will use maybe three times as much toilet paper as you. Story three. Fine, I'll say it. I always thought that pads operated like band-aids and they'll just slap them over their vaginas and absorb everything. It wasn't until I was 27 when my girlfriend at the time had some as a backup in case she ran out of tampons and I opened it and looked. The adhesive was on the wrong side for my version of how they worked, and it dawned on me that they're supposed to be stuck to the panties, not their vaginas. I only regret telling her of that revelation because she laughed until she cried and then called her mom to tell her about it. Cringy edit. Thanks for the awards. I'm just happy I'm not the only moron out there. And some ladies didn't know too, so take that ex-girlfriend. And for Pete's sake, I get it. Vulva, not vagina. Y'all must be fun at parties. A guy friend and I ended up discussing tampons one time. He had bought tampons for her girlfriend before. She always requested the super. He thought it was a size thing, like condoms, that she had a super-sized vagina. After I peeled myself off the floor, we reviewed period flow and absorption and even toxic shock syndrome. Story 4. Number 1. Where I think things should live isn't right even if I'm the only one who ever uses them. Number two, no matter how big the bed, I only need the edge of it. Number three, I've been doing the dishes wrong my entire life. Number four, that there can never be enough throws, blankets, cushions. Number five, Grey's Anatomy ran out of storylines about seven years ago, 
but that hasn't stopped them. Number six, there isn't enough laundry detergent in the world to keep up with the laundry pile. But also, number one, how nice is it to come home to someone? Number two, the warmth in the bed is quite comforting. Number three, turns out RuPaul's Drag Race is a great show. Number four, curling up on the sofa under a blanket is great and will most likely lead to napping. Number five, having someone who gets excited for you is great. It's like having a live-in cheerleader. Number six, it's always acceptable to watch a Disney movie no matter how old you are. Story five. When you're having a really tough day, she unexpectedly comes home and surprises you with a bottle of your favorite drink, homemade cookies, and a dinner you love. And then she cuddles with you while you vent about your now not-so-crappy day, and you realize what it's like to actually have someone support you. And you find yourself wanting to make sure the toilet seat is down, smiling when you can never find anything in the kitchen, rolling with it when the living room turns into a 12-stage laundry OCD deployment zone, and you laugh when you trip over her shoes that are now tangled in a knot of hair bigger than the dog. Because your house or apartment is no longer a place you live at, it's now your home, and it's safe to be the real you, not the show you put on when you were dating. I'm female, and I hope my partner thinks the same way about me. Beautifully said. Story 6. How much women add to your house? I thought it was a joke, but when I first joined the military, I only had 300 pounds of household goods total to ship to my next duty station. It could all fit in my car. The movers laughed and even said, wait till you get married, you'll have more stuff. I got married during my first duty assignment, was moving to my next, looked at the new weight of my shipping, 2,300 pounds, all from her moving in to two years of You can't just have an empty space. Bam, my efficient small footprint was gone. Now I have decorative towels, plants galore, and I'm pretty sure half the weight is her clothes and shoes. Story 7. That the plug hole will be in a constant state of, hmm, that's draining slowly. Didn't I just unclog this last week? There will be five plus pairs of shoes, not in the shoe rack, but near it or behind the door so it jams, just waiting to trip me if I ever enter the house without checking for landmines, wayward vans slip-ons. There is a wrong way to hang clothes to dry. The bottom of the shower or bath is now not only frequently slippy, but occasionally covered in glitter and, if really unlucky, some sort of oil. There is a wrong way to hang clothes to dry. I'm in this comment and I do not like it. Story 8 Lived with my ex and her sister for a year and a bit, and frick me, they were messy as crap. I actually remember one day thinking, man, these chicks are weird. They're so messy and don't give a crap. I then realized that my only reference to living with women was with my mother and sister, who are clean freaks, and that I was probably basing everything I knew about women off of my mother and sister, and that, in fact, not all women are crazy clean freaks. I'm a chick, and seeing this thread is because if you ever lived with a Mexican mom, there's no such thing as a dirty house. Story 9. If they leave stuff at the bottom of the stairs, that means you're supposed to bring it up. If it's at the top of the stairs, you should bring it down. Also, the correct place for objects in the kitchen is where they currently reside. Stuff is going to move around constantly. Just roll with it. I lived with a woman for several years now, She keeps buying junk for the kitchen, and when I finally learn where everything goes, she redecorates and moves everything, so I just got a bucket where I put all the stuff that I'm clueless about so that she can put it away. Story 10. When long, loose head hairs wash off in the shower, it's common practice to stick them to the wall rather than let them collect in the drain. If she forgets to remove them afterwards, it can be very confusing for the next person in the shower. Why are there a bunch of individual strands of hair deliberately stuck to the wall? Oh god, this is me. I try to remember to pull the hair off. It's hard to get loose hairs off of your head when it's wet, so sticking them to the shower is kind of the only option. Story 11. Just how much freaking stuff they have. Three different shampoos and conditioners, tens of different lipsticks, three foundations, makeup brushes, contouring brushes, makeup remover, so many earrings and accessories. It's not even like these were superficial or vain women. This is just the bare minimum of how they care for their appearance. Meanwhile, I'm buying my all-in-one body wash, deodorant, and mouthwash, and calling it done. Once had to use my boyfriend's all-in-one, and I looked worse after the shower. No idea how you guys do it. Story 12. 
I live with three female roommates, and one night we got onto the discussion of bathroom habits. Two of the three believed that men always stood up to pee. Like if you were going number two and had to go number one, you would stand up first and then sit down to finish the job. It was really funny to help to clarify men also sit to pee sometimes too. They really thought there was a two-step process for taking a crap. Story 13. Two things. Be sure to have a trash can in every bathroom. Buy toilet paper and tissues at Costco, and your expenses will go up. I thought it would be cheaper to have her move in. (laughs) Nope. The trash can in the bathroom is a really must-have. My boyfriend didn't want one at first, but now he's quite happy with it. I get to throw my period product in the bathroom and not in the kitchen, which is way better. Story 14. How nice it was. Even their passive presence is soothing. The changes they make to a house with little decorations. The nice aromas. I always kept a plain house to help me manage it with less work. Once I started living with a woman, my plain space filled up overnight with little decorations, rugs, scented candles, fruit, little wall-mounted flowers. My plain house felt more like a lived-in, appreciated space. I never knew things were missing before that. Story 15. I didn't realize the amount of comfort I would get. I always thought it would be like having a roommate, but it's way different, especially with a significant other. When my girlfriend and I started living together, I felt more comfortable in just about every way in my own apartment. The empathy and emotions brought to the place is also incredible. It felt more opening and welcoming after living with a bunch of guys in college where emotions don't really happen. Story 16. She's a vegetarian, and I'm not, so we agreed we'd cook one or two meals together each week, but otherwise cook our own food. Translation, I'd better go ahead and cook twice as much stuff, because she still calls herself a vegetarian if she just has a few bites of the stuff I'm cooking. My roommate says he is selectively vegan, which basically means she eats regular crap but will occasionally have a salad. It's called being an omnivore, darn it. Story 17. The color of their shoes will match their earrings and their purse, and if you look carefully, we'll pick up the highlights of the design of their top, and that's not an accident. I never realized this was a manner of dressing until I saw it being assembled firsthand. And then the next day at work, it was like I paid attention to what my female colleagues were wearing, and I'm like, holy crap, they all do this. Story 18. There are over four dozen bottles of shampoo, conditioner, skin products, etc., All of them haven't been touched or used in years. But no, she insists she'll use it one day, and they need to stay and completely fill the only cabinet there is in the bathroom. Also, stacking everything in a pile to deal with later, but it turns into a delicate tower that will fall if you look at it too hard. Story 19. I always thought she was the cleanest and neatest person I'd met. No, she had a maid service. Her hair, it gets everywhere. I do laundry wrong. It's her comforter on her bed. I'm just in it. When I plan a party, I tell everyone to bring whatever to drink. When she plans a party, she buys hundreds of dollars in booze. Apparently, I'm rude for not providing the beverages. Story 20. That she owns only one truly good bra. There's only one, and part of your duty as a man is to protect the good bra. If you're doing laundry, you must take the greatest of precautions to make sure it is properly cleaned, dried, and stored. God forbid the good bra ever turned up missing or in the wrong drawer. Ladies, why is there only one good bra? Story 21. Weren't supposed to wash hair every day. Wait, what? Am I doing it all wrong? It'd feel like I haven't had a shower unless every inch of my body had water over it. Men are usually fine with daily washing, because they tend to have shorter and thus newer hair. If you don't cut your hair for years, I imagine you'd need to take a lot more care with it. Story 22. I've never stayed on one thread as long as I've stayed on this one. Thank you, OP, and everyone who's posted. The ones about not knowing that pads stick to underwear rather than skin cracked me up, but also gave me new perspective. I mean, it makes perfect sense. How would someone who's never had to use one know if someone doesn't tell them? Story 23. Women are both simultaneously messier and cleaner than men. It's bizarre how messy rooms can get with them and how quickly they can turn it around and make it clean. Also, random hairs everywhere and makeup stains that appear. They also have a really weird obsession with glass containers or jars. My girlfriend loves glass jars and containers too. The smaller, the better. Story 24. Women are a lot stranger than I thought. 
I know that makes me sound like I'm an idiot, but it's true. When I moved in with my now wife, I quickly learned just how mentally strong a woman truly can be. They are impressive people. I have a tremendous amount of respect for women since living with one. My wife is our rock. Story 25. I was raised by a woman, so none of it was new to me, except period panties. I wasn't shocked or disgusted by it because I wasn't a 12-year-old. It was just like, huh, yeah, I guess I'd have a separate selection of underwear to use when I'm menstruating too. Why the heck would I ruin all of my sexy underwear? Story 26. Everything about this thread just makes me miss sharing my space with a girl I love. We're all humans and animals. We're all doing our best. I loved coming home to the shoe mess and the makeup everywhere. It's a neat kit. You ladies have fun things, and your skin is so soft. I miss other humans. Story 27. She had a bucket of clear plastic hair ties, at least a 1,000 in the tub. Barely a dent, and those suckers are popping up everywhere. Had being the operative word, because freaking where did they all go? There was like a thousand of them. Story 28. The whole women are neat and tidy thing went out the window pretty fast. One of my first female roommates was a total slob. Women are sort of like cats in that regard. They themselves are quite clean and well put together. They just leave a trail of destruction and hair behind them. Story 29. Girl Scout Thin Mint cookies are meant to be consumed a full tube at one sitting. Here I was keeping mine in the fridge and eating just one or two cookies a week. Absolutely, I will eat an entire sleeve and hate myself, but god dang are those my jam. Story 30. It is home with her. It is just an apartment without her. It's fun as heck. My girlfriend is my best friend, and every day coming home from work and going to get food or making food or cuddling on the couch watching shows or whatever we do, I love it. Story 31. I never knew it was acceptable to drink red wine and read a book in the bath for hours, leaving it inaccessible until she had finished. Also, destroying the toilet with the door open. I thought that was a guy thing. Turns out, we're all just human. Story 32. The way I'd been folding towels for years was apparently incorrect. I do the trifold method. My wife does the double-fold method. Oh well. First argument we had as a married couple, and I lost. She was unusually upset over the way I folded towels. Story 33. When they do that hair thing with the towel, their hair is wound up in the towel. Don't try to playfully knock it off or pull on it. You may actually get killed when you do that. It hurts like heck, and it leads to hair breaking. Story 34. That women are just people, and not some magical mystery creature that makes no sense. They eat, crap, bathe, and get ticked off, get frisky, Love and laugh, just like everyone else. Some are tough as nails, and some aren't, just like the rest of us. Story 35. If you leave something on the kitchen counter, it will get put or thrown away. If she leaves something on the kitchen counter, that's where it goes now. I don't know where half of the things that I own are located, but she does. Story 36. I'm loving reading these as a female. So entertaining and interesting. Feels like I'm reading research papers about a strange animal. The hair one especially, so relatable. I'm going to read these to my boyfriend later. Story 37. Hair clips will spawn in the most random places. Also, for some reason, I can't fathom, long hair somehow weaves its way into all of my underwear and around my junk. It tickles awkwardly getting it out. Not a fan. Story 38. I would say I didn't realize how much better my life would be before finding someone who has strengths where I'm weak and weaknesses where I'm strong. We make a much better team than apart. This is adorable. Story 39. How much difference just simple physical contact makes, like holding hands, or like in locking pinkies or touching tootsies. I love it. Amazing surprise. And then one of us will say to the other, this feels like home. Story 40. I'm happily married and have an amazing daughter. My cargo shorts pockets are no longer mine. Wife gets the right side, and my daughter gets the left side. My stuff goes in the back pockets. Story 41. They fall in when the toilet seat is left up because, since they don't have to aim their pee, they will often pee in the dark without turning on the light. Story 42. That vegetables can taste good. My parents were bad cooks. Lotion your face. That you should probably see a doctor at some point in your life. Same with dentist. Story 43. I never realized how much I could love someone until my wife and I got together. 
Living with her has been a large part of learning to give. Story 44. The toilet paper expense skyrockets. This is the sound of the toilet paper roll after my wife pees. <laughs> Until the roll is half empty. Story 45. That Home Depot is a woman's store. I go to Home Depot for a screwdriver. She wants pavers, gutters, new flooring. Story 46. Never ever dry her clothes in a dryer. Facts. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.